And now I would like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jim from Arizona, go ahead. Good evening. I am most grateful for Christian science. Just recently, I developed a rather severe stomach ache. And it was about 3 o'clock here, so it was about 6 o'clock in Plainfield. I called a practitioner and did not reach him. And so I left a message. And within a half an hour, just instantly, the pain disappeared. I am very, very grateful for this. <laughs> Nothing can make it hap- happen faster and more happily. I am most grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Jeremy. I am so grateful tonight for all that I have learned here in Plainfield about Christian science. A few months ago, I spoke with somebody from my past, but after a few moments, I realized that all her comments were actually just complaints and and self-pity. It wasn't doing me any good to hear it, and it wasn't doing her any good to say it. I stopped her and I let her know that I'm not the person to vent to anymore. I've always been considered a good listener, but I just can't be the person who lets others talk until the words stop anymore, that isn't loving or principled. During the round table and other discussions, the phrase, if you want me, you can find me in church, has been mentioned. When I first heard it, I wasn't really sure what it meant, beyond literally. Now I understand that the only way to help anyone is with the truth, and that is what this church is bringing to me. So I let her know if she wanted to talk to me again, I was going to talk to her about what I am learning here in the church. If she didn't like that, then there was no reason to talk again. We went a bit without talking, but the other day she called. She told me what was going on in her life and said she had a hard time praying about it. I spoke to her about what I've been learning here, and it didn't go on long, but she was very grateful, and I gave her the address for the website and made sure she opened it up. There's so much available here that I'm sure she will get what she needs. Throughout all of this, I'm so grateful to God for bringing me here, for all I have learned here, and for all the work my practitioner has done to open my thought to truth and to keep it clear. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Linda from Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Yes, good evening. Thank you for the music and the readings on salvation tonight. I am so grateful for a lesson I learned while working with a Plainfield practitioner. I had a meeting I needed to attend to get some information that I was dreading due to a particular individual. Over the last uh, couple of years, our interactions would be strained, unfriendly, and communication was very difficult. The practitioner has been helping me see the connection of my thought and my experiences. With this, she has been also helping me grow in faith and understanding in God that will enable me to transform my experiences in my environment to be as God intends for us to live in peace. This has been a difficult concept for me to accept. In preparation for this meeting, I was given the job of seeing this individual as a fellow child of God. I found peace by trusting God and practicing goodwill instead of judgment, joy instead of dread, and kindness over fear. As a result of the practitioner's support and my changed attitude, the meeting was friendly, we even enjoyed a couple of good laughs, and it was respectful and ended well. I was deeply grateful for this dramatic proof of how God works in our lives when we let him. One prayer that I take with me often to refer to during the day from Watches, Prayers, and Arguments given by Mary Baker Eddy on page 112 is, quote, Divine love, give me grace, meekness, understanding, and wisdom for each hour this day. Thank you very much and good evening. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania. Go ahead. Good evening, and thank you for those magnificent readings. 
Tonight, I would like to express my gratitude to God, my practitioner, and the Plainfield Church because of the healing of symptoms of swollen glands that were uncomfortable. My practitioner directed me to Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures on page 390 to 393, as well as explaining that nothing can swell or cause discomfort in our bodies. Also, a sentence emailed to me was a turning point of my understanding and a healing. This is it. The only thing that has ever touched your being is God's love. I felt then that the condition wasn't really part of me, and I say that sentence now to myself daily. Thank you to God, my practitioner who is ever available with understanding love, and the Plainfield Church that shares all the truths offered by God through the Bible and science and health with key to the scriptures. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Luann from New York, go ahead. Thank you. I'm so grateful to God for everything I've been given. Though it seems so far away now and the memories have faded, there was a time when all that surrounded me was pain and anguish. I didn't understand why God was punishing me or why God would not answer my prayers. I thought if this is all there is to life, then why was I born? And if there is a better life, then why doesn't God take me there? It certainly seemed to me that heaven was nowhere to be found on earth. I had so much to understand about God. Then I was led to Christian science. It felt like the door that seemed locked to me was finally opened and love welcomed me in. I am deeply grateful, not only for the blessings I've received since coming to a Plainfield plain practitioner for help, but for all the blessings I didn't notice before. Seeking and finding the good in everything I experienced in the past has changed not only that story, but me as well. One of the many changes that I cherish is the realization of the enormity of God's love for his children. His patience and mercy have truly lifted me out of the depths of despair to experience peace and harmony, heaven right here on earth. God has answered my prayer, and I am grateful to be serving him. I'm grateful for all the help I have received from my practitioner, for as Mrs. Eddy writes in Science and Health, through the wholesome chastisement of love, we are helped onward in the march toward righteousness peace, and purity, which is the landmarks of science. Thank you, and thank you for those readings. Thank you. Elizabeth, Elizabeth from Georgia, go ahead. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Jacob, for those readings. It was wonderful to hear you tonight. Um, I've been thinking a lot about surplus thinking, which has been talked about quite a bit in the Bible studies and roundtables. And um, last year I had, a, I had related a healing I had a few years ago where I was driving at a high speed on a highway and a semi-truck pulled in front of me, causing me to turn the wheel sharply to the left to avoid uh, getting run over. My car turned around on the highway and then backed up into the median. I was not hurt, nor was there a scratch on my car. I've thought about this experience often in the past year because I was so completely protected, though it almost seemed that it should have been a very different outcome. Just before the incident happened, I had been um, spending about an hour, I just turned off the radio, <laughs> and uh, spent about an hour just singing hymns and, and voicing psalms that I knew. Um, and this experience came up in conversation a few weeks ago with a practitioner in the church, and she had emphasized to me that it was because of my, my surplus thinking that I was thinking rightly, and therefore I was protected. And I hadn't thought about it like that 
but it makes so much sense. And so I have been cherishing that. Um, and I've also been reading from Martha Wilcox. The realization of the dominion and influence of right scientific thinking is the first step away from the misconceptions that man can be governed by chance or circumstance or environment or any of the various forms of matter or evil. Just very grateful to be learning this lesson. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. I'm very grateful to be learning in this church that uh, that God takes care of every single one of our needs, no matter what it is, uh, and uh, it brought to mind an experience I had, uh, it was a couple of years ago now, but my business partner uh, had returned back to our office from being gone several days on a business trip, came back only to find that his computer wasn't working. Now, we do virtually all of our business on our computer. So if our computers don't work, we're out of business. So it's a very serious thing when our computers don't work. And my business partner has always been kind of a computer geek and able to fix just about everything. So for him not to be able to fix his computer, it had to be a very serious kind of problem. So he was kind of frantic about what to do to set up a, a backup computer or do all kinds of stuff, and all of which would have taken a lot of time or a lot of money or both. Well, I was about to go into New York for a bunch of meetings, and I had spoken with a practitioner in this church and asked for help for, this, for these meetings. And I was told by the practitioner to remember that there aren't many minds, there's only one mind. And that mind knows the right answer to everything that comes up at each of my meetings. And when my business partner told me about his computer, I thought, well, that's the answer to that problem. There is only one mind. And that mind is his mind. And that mind knows what his computer needs. So I gave, gave that mental declaration to myself and I left for my meetings. Well, less than half an hour later, I got a call from my partner who said, you won't believe what happened. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, this other fellow in our office who works for a different company had, unbeknownst to us, called his computer repairman because his computer wasn't working. And five minutes after I left, his computer repairman came into the office, fixed his computer, and while I was there, my business partner said, well, would you mind taking a look at mine? And the guy said, no problem, and took a look at his computer and had it running within five minutes. My partner was so excited. He says, can you believe that? Are, are we lucky or what? <laughs> and I laughed, and I, and I just couldn't help myself but to say, yes, but luck has nothing to do with it. God is taking care of us. And he had to agree wholeheartedly with that. So I'm so grateful to see God at work. I'm so grateful to be learning that God takes care of every single need we have when we honestly and genuinely turn to him for help. I'm grateful for all the help I received from practitioners in this church. And I'm grateful for Mary Baker Eddy for giving us the science of Christianity which solves every problem that we could ever have. And it's great to be here tonight. 
Thank you. Karen. Karen from Kansas, go ahead. Yes, I wanted to say that I had applied for membership in the Plainfield Church, and I finally received a letter from the membership committee and was welcomed unanimously and with great love. I am so grateful. I am now a member of the church and I want to be that I want to be part of. It feels great. And I wanted to relate, uh, read to you what I saw in the uh, local newspaper, and I was very much amazed because I thought it was just not worth reading <laughs> most of the time. But uh, this is a, co a commissioner who was in a county, uh, just uh, the next county from uh, from our county. It's a lead county, and he said about uh, he said how can the moral deterioration of our culture be most effectively addressed by a change on the inside, a changing of a person's heart, being using biblical terminology that is done by God alone, and he uses his word, the Bible, to produce it. The message of the Bible is what one must believe to receive a new heart, to become a new creation. And then he quotes, and he was kind of uh, accused of uh, having always uh, religious quotes, uh, and, and, you know, and, and he believes that we, we need to change as a nation. Anyway, and then he quoted John Adams, who said, Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. And I thought that was so great to find that in a local paper. And I uh, wanted to share it with you. And anyway, um, thank you for the readings and the wonderful readings and the testimonies and the music. Thanks so, thank you so much. Thank you. Fairly from Maryland. Go ahead. Thank you. I, I want to express my gratitude for the Plainfield Bible lessons and Bible study on Saturdays. They have given me knowledge of the Old Testament, which I knew very little of before, and the ancient prophets and their insistence on obedience to the one God. They these Bible studies have also deepened my understanding of the New Testament and Jesus' teachings. And I feel I have come to know Jesus Christ more closely, which in itself has been, of course, a great blessing. I want also to express my gratitude for our unity and time to watch us. They give us a consistent way to work for the world in our mission as Christian scientists, and they have also deepened my own faith and my own and my own determination to stay with it. I have to pinch myself to realize that I have found and become part of such a high group in this life, lifting us up to the glory of earth and heaven and man in God. And thank you for the beautiful reading. Thank you. Tom from New York, go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. And I want to thank this church and all its members. I think the uh, Plainfield Church is just absolutely wonderful. I want to let everybody know how grateful I am to um, be a member of the church, to know, um, um, get to know the members. And I like to think that... Uh, uh, having, you know, being a member of the church, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm a better person. Um, at least I feel that way. So, um, um, yeah, I'm just uh, um, wanted to say that uh, there, there are so many things that are helpful. Um, the one that I've been reading this week on the website, um, it's actually kind of comforting, you know, because sometimes... Uh, I might read the lesson, do some praying, and so forth and so forth, and then uh, I get busy during the day, and um, all those thoughts are sort of gone, and then you kind of read here that uh, 
um, you know, about accumulating oil in your lamp, you know, so that was kind of comforting. So um, really appreciate the person who picked the watch and uh, everybody who's done such wonderful things for this church because I think this church is absolutely wonderful and has done so much for me. Thank you. Thank you. Betty from California, go ahead. Good evening. I'm very grateful for the Plainfield Church. Uh, the Sunday and Wednesday services have always felt like such a lifeline to me, whether I listen to them on the tapes way back when and or on the computer. Um, and sometimes when things seemed really hard, like when my mom passed on, and all I could do was just lay down on the floor and listen to those services. They were such a lifeline. Um, they've always been comforting and uplifting and healing. And now, with the, all our technology and the teleconference, we can actually participate, like give testimonies or, or readings. And the readings tonight were, were so wonderful on salvation. I'm also very grateful for the round tables and the Bible studies where so much teaching and learning about Christian science and the Bible takes place. I love researching the questions before the Bible study, and I remember when the round table first started, and I could just listen at first. I was a little <laughs> timid about talking, and a uh, practitioner encouraged me until finally I, I finally <laughs> opened my mouth on that. And what a difference. It was so much it was like going from level A to level, you know, all the way up <laughs> uh, for the participation. I'm so grateful for all the practitioner I've received over the years from the Plainfield Church as well. I'm just so grateful for this church. Thank you. Thank you. Lil. I'm so grateful for a couple of healings recently that I had. Um, one was painful knees and the other was sensitive teeth. And these um, healings didn't happen overnight, which actually I'm very grateful for. I'm more grateful for the changes in my thought, which was really needed, than I was for the physical healings themselves. For all this, I'm just so grateful for practitioner help for the love, for the rebukes, and the love behind the rebukes. Much needed for me was to be on self, to be grateful, to have joy, and there's much more. And I was reading in our current issue of Love is a Liberator, <clears throat> excuse me, an article by Herbert Eustace, um, in which uh, had a helpful statement for me where he references Mrs. Eddy and miscellaneous, excuse me, miscellaneous writings be active and, however slow, thy success is sure. Toil is triumph. And this I really needed to, to read and to, to really take into my heart because I still have much in my thinking to correct. And I'm not going to rush it, but I'm not going to hold back either. And I'm just so grateful that God led me here where I can learn all these truths and where I can be a help for him, a worker in the world. And thank you for those wonderful readings. Thank you. Day Day or Florence, go ahead. This is Florence, thank you. Thank you for the comforting readings and the hymns. I'm so grateful to understand through Christian science to be careful that in uncovering error, I should uncover it as a lie, as the opposite of what is true about me. Unless I uncover error as a lie, it means I really have not uncovered it. This understanding has been so important because, for example, I would come to the realization that maybe I had resentment, revengefulness, depression, and say that I have always had this and that I would work to get rid of it in my thought. That 
always looking back now seemed to be an uphill battle because I had accepted something about me that was not true. I realized that this mistake was part of my delayed healings. God never withholds any good from us. Good is ever present. And during the times the healing seemed delayed, I could ask God what was required of me. Those seemingly delayed periods also helped me to gain more understanding of God's nature, to become more convinced of his presence, of his love, of his power, to feel his comfort, and to learn patience. I realized that when I patiently waited for him to uncover or to really make me see the unreality of whatever the claim may be, I started to trust more his salvation, to know that his salvation is already present. This proves that the delay really was not a delay. It was a period for me to learn to receive a deeper trust, to have a deeper trust of God's nature, to see myself correctly, and to be more aware of his love and to know that only good is present and that evil, all evil, is nothingness. Thank you so much tonight for everyone's testimonies. I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Thank you. And thank you for those wonderfully clear readings on salvation. Appreciate it so much. I want to express appreciation for all the good that is expressed in this church, including every word that is shared in these Wednesday evening testimony meetings. The readings last week were on the peace of God. One of the testifiers mentioned trusting that God is with them and said, if God brings me to it, he will surely bring me through it. It sounds like a simple thing, but that really stuck with me and helped me when facing some challenges this week. So thank you, all, thank you to all, and please don't anyone hesitate to share an inspiration, for you never know how you will be helping someone else. Thank you for all the offerings tonight. Thank you. This is Bruce. I wanted to share something that's helped me immensely. Some number of years ago, I remember talking to a teacher in this church, and she asked me, well, how's your spiritual growth going? And I says, well, I did such and such for person A, and I did such and such else for another person over there. And she says, you mean just doing kind things for other people, and that's it? And she kind of left it at that and let me think about it for a while. I remember going away from that conversation and asking myself, well, what else is there? But we have an article on our carousel on our website called Unselfed, and it's by Herbert Eustace, and it meant a lot to me. I'm going to read just one brief paragraph. Unselfishness, as humanly interpreted, is full of personalities. And to be unselfish means to be doing or giving to others, whereas to be unselfed in the true metaphysical or spiritual sense is the exact opposite. It has absolutely no personality attached to it. It is centered entirely on God as all in all, Every thought begins with God and flows from Him, enfolding His presentation of Himself in all the beauty, glory, and completeness of His own being. And I realized when I said before, oh, I did such and such for somebody else, I realized that my motivation was so that I could just feel good about doing good um, in a personal way. But here Herbert Eustace explains, if God motivates it, then you do it. But if God does no, not motivate it, then it's just selfish do-goody. And the motivation is just to make yourself look good instead of to make God look good I mean, or 
let God express himself in all his glory and completeness of his own being without any sense of personality attached to it. And when I've gotten this clear in my own head, I've done the right things at the right time and avoided doing the do-goody things which were not God's intention at all and ended up, from my past experience, consuming a lot of time and taking me away from what would really is appropriate for me to do. So I'm learning more and more to get personality out of the picture and obey God humbly. And as a result, when I do it, things work out well. But if I want to just feel good about myself, about doing good for others, it usually backfires. And uh, so that's a good lesson for me. And I'm thankful for this wonderful article on our website. Mary. Okay, I will read uh, from our bulletin board. Maryland, special gratitude for the round table today, Easter 2016. Thank you to all the members participating for their very helpful discussion, in particular about being aware of God all the time as we go about our day. Sharing this wonderful science in order to practice effectively is a great gift. And then Pennsylvania. I logged onto the bulletin board tonight to thank everyone for the roundtable on Sunday, only to discover that it had been expressed exactly as I was thinking and feeling. This outstanding roundtable will go out to mankind to heal and guide all who have the opportunity to, to listen. Someone said, quote, Father, here I am, end quote. Amen. And then a letter from California. Dear friends, Thank you for all the work done for independent Christian science as practiced in the Plainfield Church. The services, Bible study, roundtable, website, and literature, and CDs provide full and overflowing blessings to all who partake. Much thanks to you. And then this is an um, email from South Africa. It was sent to our clerk. Benjamin had sent him a free copy of Mr. Eustace's book and some other free materials. And he said, Dear Benjamin, I received the book you posted. Thank you so very much. Thank you also for the Love is the Liberator booklet. I want to thank Plainfield Church for the book as well as for their wonderful website. I wish you and your loved ones and the members of Plainfield a blessed Easter. Lovingly. And then this email is from the Philippines. Hello, friends. I am a member of a branch church, First Church of Christ Scientists, Fuego City, Philippines. Honestly, it is my first time to discover your website and your church. Reading your history, the history from Sense to Soul, taken from the hymnal, moved me so deeply. I know for sure that God led me to your website as I am battling with error in the form of discouragement this week. Upon reading the history of your church, I am inspired with your demonstration and your firmness to principle and for not giving up. Now you are doing a lot of lovely works to bless mankind and for the cause of Christian science. The Unity Watches are very powerful and I know it has brought a healing effect to you, your community, and it infinitely reached and fed my thirst for enlightenment. Reading your church magazine and listening to some audio sharing found on your website has brought a lot of awakening and inspiration to go on and to fight the good fight with all thy might. Whatever mortal mind seems to present to the material senses and claim the victory over matter. I am so deeply grateful for your wonderful demonstration and openly sharing your experiences to the world. This spiritual connection will continue to grow since I have something new to share to my co-members as we really need to be awake and to rouse our dormant thoughts. Thank you all. Isaiah 55:11 states, so shall my word be that that goes forth from my mouth. 
it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent, with a grateful heart. These are beautiful emails, and uh, we are so grateful to those of you around the world who are finding us, and thank you for writing. We appreciate it, and we welcome you so very warmly. That last quote from Isaiah is one that we pray with often, that God's word does not go out, come back void, but it does return and uh, brings many blessings. So grateful to have heard from you. I have a very old Bible, also a science and health, that I've used for many, many years. I treasure them. They're full of notes that I've written during the years uh, in the margins, various things that have meant a lot to me. Sometimes I will write prayers for healing or um, thanking God for his goodness. And the other night I had opened up in that, in that old familiar Bible of mine uh, to Isaiah 43 to a few verses that I had circled and underlined, and the verses are these. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I had those verses circled because uh, remembering at one time where I felt I was in a situation in which there was no way out. It was not a good situation and I, I couldn't figure out how I was going to get out of this. And uh, it, it was a feeling almost of desperation. And I, I read these verses, and I realized that this is a promise from God, that he can make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, a path in the mighty waters. Uh, doesn't matter how dire your situation can seem or how trapped you might feel, you don't give up. Turn to these verses and know that God will provide a way. It also says to forget the former things, uh, stop going back to your past, or stop outlining perhaps a way that you want. Uh, you want things to turn out in a certain manner. Just drop all that. God will be, create a new thing, he says. Behold, I will create a new thing. Um, let him work. Don't try to work, work it out on your own, or even worse, work it out for God, because that would never work anyway. Let God do it. So as I prayed these prayers earnestly, I took these verses and just worked with them for a day or two. I didn't have a huge amount of time, actually, to work this out. And lo and behold, a way did open up for me, something I'd never thought about, something I'd never expected, but it was a way out of this situation. And I felt free. Of course, I always had been free, I had to have the eyes to see it, the eyes to see what God is doing and was doing and will do in my life. So those verses are very, very precious to me, and uh, it's the truth. They worked for me, they can work for you too. There's never any condition that's so severe, Mrs. Eddy says, that divine love is not there waiting for you. That's a paraphrase, but it's a wonderful, comforting statement. God is always with us. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. It was lovely to hear a, a new voice, Jacob, reading our beautiful music. And, and thank you all so much for your testimonies. Thank you.